So, this is TV Archaeologist, the obvious regular video slot to couple with He Who Moans. This is a very self-indulgent idea because I wanted a slot where I could give a broad overview of any TV show that I feel like talking about, and I've called it TV Archaeologist because I've noticed something. I don't watch much TV that it's popular to talk about online. Aside from a few things, if you start talking about a TV show that most people watch, then I'll start staring at you blankly and start hoping that the conversation returns to something that I'm more familiar with. Like, the weather, what day of the week it is, whether we prefer peanut M&Ms or the chocolate kind. Just, I'm an interesting person, shut up. But anyway, what I do watch is old TV shows that are forgotten by loads of people. I've always acted like I'm about 20 years older than I actually am, so it makes sense why that happened. So this will be more a place to talk about shows that I grew up with, have stumbled across recently, or ones that you just may not be aware of that I happen to like. Obviously this is going to be a problem if people don't happen to care about the show that I'm talking about, just... Look, I gave up on Sons of Anarchy after one season, alright? Just, I'm sorry, I'll repent at a later date. But yeah, anyway, to start out with, a show that I have a special pair of hazy nostalgia goggles for, The Merry White House Experience. Being a BBC Radio 4 nerd, specifically a nerd for the topical sketch and stand-up show The Now Show when I was a teenager, I stumbled across floating around the internet the early 90s stand-up and sketch show The Merry White House Experience, broadcast between 1990, the year I was born, and 1992. It was massively popular at the time, but has pretty much been lost to history and barely received any repeats, let alone a DVD release. And it is kind of weird that I managed to see it, as before YouTube existed, I probably would have gone on not knowing this existed at all. Yeah, there is a necessary reason for online TV piracy, especially for people like me, because in a lot of cases, lots of the old shows that I'm going to talk about in this slot aren't actually available for purchase, mostly because of rights issues. I like to think that my younger self's mindset was, I'm going to watch all of television first, and then go on to the recent stuff once I've caught up. There really should be a service that caters for people like me. There's a huge gap in the market for backwards-looking man-children. Sort of like a Netflix, but for retro TV shows. So yeah, The Merry White House Experience was populated by four comedians, at least one of whom British TV viewers will probably know quite well. There was David Baddiel, who went on to drop any pretense of having any intelligent observations about life and culture after this. Steve Punt and Hugh Dennis, who do major Radio 4 mainstay The Now show together. And as British viewers probably know, Hugh Dennis went on to do Mock the Week and play the embarrassing dad in Outnumbered and personal favourite Rob Newman, who started off as their impressionist and overgrown man-child, who, after a while, he started to do very long, vaguely surreal monologues about depression and self-loathing. And... No, he wasn't who I modelled my appearance and demeanour on, just... J j shut up, no, my being a fan of his is just a coincidence, really. Uh, I'm an entirely original creation. But yeah, it was a bog-standard comedy showcase format. The sketches were a mixture of social and general life observational comedy with a sneering tone to it, which are probably the only bits that are marketable for a modern audience. And early 90s topical gags and sketches based on the pop culture of the time, which may seem totally alien to you nowadays, but for something penned as sort of semi-satirical, it's surprisingly penetrable, as lots of their cultural reference points have actually had an enduring legacy, as you'll probably be aware. And I was watching this in the mid-2000s. I did feel that season 2 especially has held up fairly well, as most of the sketches do work by today's standards and cultural context. Some of them were a bit Python-esque, albeit they are quite dated nowadays. It is a very, very 90s show. Their most popular running sketch was History Today, which, like stuff that came after it that became known for catchphrases... <laughs> That's you, that is. It is another of those seen one, seen them all type situations, let's overdo one good idea that we had a couple of years ago, but it is a good idea, and it's fun for the first few if you've never seen it before. Like most stuff that you liked when you were a teenager, it is looking a lot ropier than I remember it being back when I first stumbled across it. But I still totally see why I was so into Rob Newman when I was younger, and you can kind of tell why he seriously changed following this period, as you'd never be able to keep up that level of moody, downbeat, morose comedy without going kind of off the rails, and you started to doubt whether he was really playing unhappy for comic effect, or he was genuinely unhappy, and being funny was a convenient accident. In the show that he went on to do with David Baddiel the year after the Merry White House experience ended, called Newman and Baddiel in Pieces, a surreal mixture of sitcom and sketch and stand-up, he really upped the ante for lots of his depressing monologues. 
which included a long, very funny, but incredibly dark sequence of him contemplating suicide and then attempting it and failing miserably and accidentally killing his neighbours as a result. <laughs> well, I know, it must have been subsidence. Not someone hanging themselves. Did, someone else, did you say hanging themselves? She said hanging themselves, because uh, you'd need rope for that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Ooh, wow did I like some morbid shit when I was younger. That and Rob Newman never really seemed that suited to partnering with David Baddiel in the first place. That just sort of happened because Punt and Dennis were very much a double act who complemented each other's comedy really well, whereas Newman and Baddiel seemed like very different people. In all the features that they performed together on the show, they just never really seemed that suited to each other. Afterwards, it became more well known that they grew to really dislike each other over the course of their writing career together. Their stand-up sections on their live dates were rigidly separated from each other, which kind of made it really obvious they really weren't suited to being a double act. They very rarely shared the stage together. I remember stumbling across his rarely seen first solo stand-up show that he did after the split with Badil, called Dependence Day, which I really liked at the time. And in it, he seems a lot happier. He still peppers it with self-loathing monologues, but the atmosphere is much more light-hearted. It is puerile comedy marketed specifically for teenagers and overgrown man-children, yes, but he seemed more confident and more well-suited to performing on his own. He went on to do lots of really heavy-going political stuff, and when I say heavy-going political, I mean intensely so. There's a severe contrast between the Rob Newman from the Mary Whitehouse experience and the incredibly self-effacing Rob Newman of today. I do really like his heavy-going political stuff, but the idiot child in me will always love his earlier work. But I do appreciate what he's doing right now, and it is really respectable to drop something that you're not happy with, but is really popular and gets you lots of money, and follow something less popular, but that you are really passionate about. Steve Punt and Hugh Dennis turned out to have a lot more longevity in their careers than Newman and Baddiel did, even if it did take them a lot longer to achieve this. They clearly liked each other a lot more, which definitely helped. They were clearly writing together for a lot longer before the Mary Whitehouse experience. Steve Pump being the one that set up the jokes and the context, while Hugh does the physical end and the punchlines. But yeah, Hugh Dennis, even in the early days, was always destined to be the most popular member of the group. Punt and Dennis went on to do their own show called the imaginatively titled Punt and Dennis Show, which I've seen some of, and I'm sort of between liking it and not liking it. It has aged a lot more noticeably than the Mary Whitehouse experience has, and since I'm used to hearing them do harder-hitting political and topical stuff, seeing them do broader observational and more sketch-based humour, which was broadcast in a pre-Watershed slot, it felt a bit weird and out of place. And as for David Baddiel... Uh, we will get to some of the stuff that he's done since then at some point. He was fine on the Mary Whitehouse experience because the format set the agenda and the tone for him, and I enjoyed him on Newman and Baddiel in pieces because I enjoy bleak and bitter dark comedy, but as he gained more clout and creative autonomy, his career veered off in a direction that I was never going to be the audience for. So yeah, that was the Mary Whitehouse experience, crude and sneering, and kind of dated and puerile comedy from another time two parts bitterness, spite and malice, and two parts fun, light-hearted and silly. Sort of a mix between those two teams, really. And I do still see why I loved stumbling across this televisual buried treasure when I was a teenager, and despite the fact it's dated quite a lot, I will always have a soft spot for it, because I'm kind of backwards like that. <laughs>